All right, shalom, mishpaka, shalom, shalom, shalom. Okay, so today we're going to be doing a cool little recipe. My lighting is probably terrible today, and I apologize for that. I probably should open some window. Um, that's better. Okay, let me open this one. Okay. Yes, yeah, a lot better, a lot better, a lot better. Okay, so what I'm going to do this morning is I am going to do the soap video as I promised that I would do. Um, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a quiche, a crustless quiche, because of course, you know, I'm gluten free and it's kind of hard to find like a good gluten free crust. So I'm going to um, just make it crustless. Okay, I found a recipe online, and that recipe, um, it does say gluten-free crustless quiche. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to modify um, a lot of these things. It, it calls for tapioca flour. I'm going to use regular flour. Um, it calls for corn kernels. I'm not putting that in my stuff. That That's just, I don't like that. And uh, let's see, let me see, is there anything else? Nope, everything else I'm gonna include. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, like I said, I'm gonna sub uh, tapioca flour for just regular all-purpose gluten-free flour, okay? So let me grab that. All right, so I'm going to use this one here. I'm going to turn the camera, okay? So I'm going to be using this one right here. It's vegan. Um, my daughter, like I said in the previous video, she's going through this phase where she wants to do like vegan stuff. And so what I have laid out is um, I have from HEB, they have these pre-cut like uh, bell peppers and onions and stuff like that so sometimes when I don't feel like just buying a whole onion I'm just making something quick I'll do that they also have this right here which is a, a like a, a stuffing starter um, but I don't use it for stuffing I just love the fact that it has onion celery sage thyme and rosemary so I really like that and I didn't have to do it myself so it's just something that we do like that's just really quick if we want to do something fast um, that's what we'll go to but my husband he does make these all the time and so he'll cut up like red yellow green orange bell peppers and put them in mason jars as you can see he does that all the time and i'm sure he has one that has garlic in it because he does that as well so yeah all right so what i'm gonna do is um i already have my um muffin um inserts ready okay i sprayed them with just a little bit of pam which i don't really like but there we have it okay so i'm gonna go ahead and get prepared to mix all of my ingredients. It called for eight eggs, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my eggs uh, taken care of and I'll be back. All right, so I have my oil here in the pan, just a little olive oil I put in there, and I have my vegetables. Now, it called for half a cup of red bell, uh, bell pepper and half a cup of green, but me, I'm only gonna do like three fourths. I'm gonna tell you why, because I made spinach last night when I made my cod, my fish, and it already has bell peppers and onions and stuff because I sauteed my spinach. So what I'm going to do is just kind of like cook these down a little bit and then I'm going to add um, my spinach that I cooked already. So let's see. See? 
So that spinach already has a good onions and everything in it. It's delicious. Plus, I'm also not going to add salt to this recipe because my the cheese is gonna is salty already, and also the spinach has enough salt in it from last night that I made. I made it a little saltier because we had it with some mashed potatoes. Um, that you know didn't put much salt in there so I'm gonna go ahead and just saute this up and add my spinach and then I'll be back okay all right so I'm back I've already sauteed um, my vegetables put them to the side um, I put my spinach in there just to cook a spoonful I used my little wooden spoon took a spoonful of it put it in there just mix it together because it doesn't call for it but I want to add some vegetables to mine now the recipe in itself, I'll be back, hold on. The recipe in itself, um, it says it's eight servings. So I'm assuming that because it's eight eggs, that that's gonna be eight servings, um, like an egg per person. Now it does call for honey mustard. I don't know about this honey mustard, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it. I'm gonna go ahead and try it. I, I, just, I just don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the eggs. I'm gonna do the honey mustard and milk. It calls for milk to uh, a half a cup of milk. So let me just rinse this off real quick. And I'm sorry about the lighting, y'all. It's, it's a sad shame. So, um, we have some, I'm going to use, they probably used regular milk. Me, I'm not I'm lactose intolerant. So I'm just going to use the unsweet almond milk. Okay. So let me just get that ready. Just a half a cup. half a cup. I'm going to just go ahead and toss that on in there just in case I need it for something else. Okay. And as I go, as I cook, I always like to like just kind of like clean as I go along because I don't like to have to like clean up a bunch of stuff after I cook. That is just terrible to me. So um, I'm not the best egg cracker. My daughter is really good at it. I really need to slide the trash over here. That's okay. So, um, I want you guys to comment below. Let me know um, if you, you know, have ever made this recipe before or something similar. I really suck at cracking eggs. Like, I really do. I really like but um like what type of recipes do you guys have do you guys um have a quiche recipe that you use um what are some good breakfast ideas that you all have because sometimes i feel like i am eating the same thing over and over and over again i have got more into like african cuisine and things like that but it still like seems like to me a lot of times it's like I'm making the same thing over and over again you know taco Tuesday meatless Monday and so I'm trying to do some different things you know try some different stuff we do eat a lot different than we used to eat like we eat a lot of lentils and things like that now so um, So, I have my milk, I have my eggs, and it's saying that it wants me to add honey mustard. Like I said, I'm going to try this honey mustard stuff. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put a tablespoon, it says.
So, I mean, to tell you guys, I have been dealing with my wrist really bad. So, I started walk, walk, um, walking, I'm tripping. I have started working a, um, a job from home in 20... Uh, 2020 and my wrist I think just from all of that typing that I was doing working for Capital One first I started off working for Walmart and then you had to get like a permanent position in order for you to um, stay on it was like a temp thing I guess well not really but anyway it was through this company called Sykes which I actually like the company um I had a really good supervisor. So when I started having issues with uh, my wrist, I took some time off. I did like short term disability. Because I was ready to go back to work after years of not working for real and just doing like, little things. So, like you see, I'm just whisking this up. I was ready, you know. But my wrist, I found out. At first, I thought it was carpal tunnel, which I said was a slight. It was slight. But I found out that I was dealing with a radial cardio osteoarthritis. So, y'all guys already know that I deal with the rheumatoid arthritis. And now I have to deal with this. So, it's just time for me to really, like, change it up, like, what I'm doing as far as my eating habits and things like that. I'm already gluten free because you guys know that I have celiac. So I don't eat gluten already. I don't eat a lot of meat, although I was eating more meat than normal. I do like cheese. Um, and I know there's vegan cheeses out there, but I don't do well with vegan cheese. It doesn't do well on my stomach. So, and then I found out that I guess some nutritional yeast has MSG in it and I'm allergic to MSG, like very bad. So, that's not going to work either. So, I'm trying to figure out how can I make like a, a substitute cheese that would be good. You know, something that's yummy. It doesn't taste artificial. I don't like when something tastes artificial. Alright. So, I finished mixing that. Y'all can see right here. And now, it was telling me, you know, of course, it wanted me to add salt and pepper and stuff like that. Again, I'm not going to add those things. Why? Because I already have spinach that has salt in it. My spinach is already salty. The cheese is going to have salt. I don't want to overload with salt. It says salt to taste. I'm just going to see, okay? So we're just we're just gonna work with this recipe. We're just gonna see. We're just gonna kind of modify it. Okay. So I did that. Now it says that to add the tapioca flour, which like I said, I'm not using tapioca flour. I'm using this. So let me just rinse this out real good. this out I don't want the flour to stick all right it says two tablespoons so we're gonna see we are going to see clean my little fatty mustard spoon and I probably already have a spoon in there actually maybe Okay, so I'm gonna use my little spoon here. I'm gonna add my flour. Okay, I'm gonna get this messy because, like I said, my camera angle is terrible. Okay, 
So I got my tapioca. It's said to add. So I am going to do spice. That I am gonna do. Okay. I'm just gonna use a regular garlic powder. Um Supposed to be half a, a teaspoon so i'm just gonna just i'm gonna eyeball it I'm just gonna do that okay and then it says the onion powder which i do have but it's all the way up there well, i cannot reach that okay hold on i'll be back all right so i couldn't find my onion powder that's okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna use this here, the Mrs. Dash, and it is salt free, okay? And it's the onion um, and herb. So this one has dried onions, so black pepper, sweet chili pepper, um, parsley, basil, uh, oregano, savory, thyme, celery seed, mustard, cumin, Rosemary, cayenne pepper. Ooh, I don't know. Let me see. Hold on. Hmm. I got a little heat to it. I don't eat nothing spicy because it gives me heartburn. I know that they say spicy food is supposed to be good for you. So, save the speech, y'all. But, it's just, it just gives me hard work. So, I don't really want to do anything that's going to, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add like a dash of this, okay? Here we go. Mm, a little bit more. Alright. So, A whisk. Isn't that strange? Move this up. I used to, but I don't have one now. So I'm just gonna take my time and just use a fork. Nothing ever hurt just to use a fork. You don't have to have all these gadgets and stuff. But I know I do have a whisk somewhere. I know I have my little blender. I have to blend it out so I will save my wrist because this is a lot of wrist work. So, if you have wrist problems, you might want to use a mixer or uh, actually do a wrist. Yeah, that has some heat to it. I can still feel that on my tongue a lot. But my husband, my Ish, he buys those things all the time because... He wants the, the flavor, but he doesn't want the uh, salt. But he does that all the time. I'm almost done beating this. I just have to get all that flour. Scrape the edges and stuff. So I'm going to finish whisking this real quick, and then I'll be back. All right, so everything is all whisked together. So I'm going to go ahead and put some stuff back. Like I said, I don't like to cook with a bunch of stuff all over the place. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add my cool vegetables because I um, let my vegetables cool down, remove them from the heat. So, see, there's my vegetables. Okay, and remember, I just used three fourths of a cup of the bell peppers that they had said to add. And I added my own spinach that was cooked, it was already cooked last night. I'm gonna get all that goodness 
and I need a new pan because once it starts getting scraped, these pans are supposed to be only used by me, but somehow, some way, those children, they use it and scrape my pan. So that means now I need to get a new pan. Alright, so we're going to just mix this in evenly, do what it says. Okay, but we're gonna see, all right. So now we've got that all mixed together and now we're going to fill, ah, oh, my bad. We gotta put half a cup of cheese in here, okay? I'm pretty sure you don't have to, but look, if you didn't wanna have cheese in it, I'm sure you didn't have to add cheese, but I'm gonna have cheese, y'all know I'm gonna have cheese, okay? So, I'm just going to go ahead and just finish this bag on Because, I mean, it can't hurt to have a teeny bit more. Teeny bit more cheese. Just a tiny bit. The semester started back up again for the children so you know how that is okay so anyway so i gotta pour this back in here and we're still doing homeschool we did one year of um, public school don't do it don't do it the influence is so heavy the agenda they push i mean it's ridiculous, to be honest with you. It's very ridiculous. So, I'm going to make sure that if it's up to me, my children will never be in public school again. Now, the program that I'm doing right now is called Texas Connections Academy. And it is an online, um, it's at home school, basically. So it still has the same curriculum. They still take their star testing and all of those things like that, but it's at home and you can kind of make your schedule. So like when we have the feast days, um, they I have them work through like Christmas break and all of those things that we don't do. And when the feast days come around then they can take off. And so, um, whenever, you know, we need to take off for the things that we actually do and celebrate, then they can take off. Also, if there's any type of, like, um, lesson or something that goes against what we believe, I don't have to, um, they don't have to do that either. We always find a, a, a different assignment for them. So if it's like Christmas stuff, Santa Claus, or Halloween things, anything like that that we don't do, um, you can sub for that, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and just pour this in here, okay? I think, I hope, I hope this is smart and I'm not spilling. No! I spill just a little bit. I'm going to just do that. Okay. It looks like it's going to be good, right? 
feel like I need more cheese. But that could just be me, you know. I'm a I'm a cheese I'm a cheese person, you know. cheese my husband takes up time and shreds cheese so that we can have good cheese he gets the um telemook cheese that doesn't have any you know pork or anything like that in it i'm just gonna add a little bit more not a lot yeah i'm not gonna be crazy i just feel like it just wasn't enough following their recipes and stuff. <laughs> Y'all know that. We do what we want to do. So, I'm just going to mix that in real quick. I don't think it's going to be delicious. I already have my oven preheated to 350. So, I'm going to move this out the way. You're done? You sure? Did you do good? Did you do good? You sure? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna like kind of like carefully pour this in here. I don't wanna overfill it. Oh yes, it slid down in a good. Okay. Don't spill, don't spill. Okay, I'm just gonna show y'all. This is tedious. I really want to like learn how to bake for real. Like I don't know how to like I can bake like a box cake or muffins or something like that, but I just never really got into like the baking thing. But I would really like to do that now. Like, I want to make my own bread and stuff. So I think that's going to be my next video. I'm just going to try my hand at making my own bread. Like, I know how to do the unleavened bread. I know how to do the keto bread, as y'all saw on the video. This is not going to be enough uh, muffin things, I don't think. We can see. So see, that made enough for all that. Okay. All righty then. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pouring this. I do have another little thing that's like six of them I think that I can use as well oh I hope this turns out good hmm. Hmm, a little bit left I wonder if I can just kind of top off I just don't want it to overflow you know when it rises so I'm just gonna I'm gonna use a different one. I still had another one, so and I had a few of these, a few more of these anyway. So I think maybe like two more will work. And I think I'm gonna bake these and not put any non-stick stuff on them to see what happens. This is just a little extra, right? Just experimenting. See how it comes out. Yeah, four of them. So it made about four, four more. Oh, 
Okay. All right. So as you can see, I filled them. And I'm going to put those in the oven. They have to be in the oven for... Uh, let's see. Oh, see, it said I could sprinkle some additional cheese on top, but I already added my cheese, extra cheese. So I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Y'all think I'm good? Y'all think I'm good? I think I'm good. I don't think I need to add any more cheese because I need to slow down with the cheese anyway. All right. So I need to put it in there for 35 to 45 minutes. Now, um, this is going to be a little different. It said that I was going to have to decrease the cooking time if you use muffins. So we're going to see. I'm going to just play it by ear. I'm going to check on it in about 20 minutes. So I started my timer, okay? So let me go ahead and just get cleaned up, get this area cleaned up so then I can come back and do the soap. Be back. Alrighty, so I have everything now, okay? So I'm gonna do lavender. This is the brand that I'm gonna do, okay? I'm going to do a little bit of lilac and lilies. Let me see if you can see it real good. And I'm going to do, it's just going to see. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. I might do, hmm, I was thinking about a little geranium, but I don't think my family will like that too much. So I just, I think I'm going to do basic. I'm going to do, I have a basic recipe that I do, which is lavender and lemon that I don't mind sharing with you guys. Um, so what I do is uh, okay. So I have things like this that are dedicated for soap and lotion. When you use stuff like this, you don't want to use it for like cooking and stuff like that afterwards. You want to keep it in to the side. So you may want to label it if your family is not used to it. If you're going to be new to doing something like this, you want to label it so that you can make sure that nobody uses it. My family knows so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so this is how it looks. Okay. Now, if you'll see that this is already cut, you see. It's already cut. Reason being, and it's basically like, if you look, it's almost half that's cut. Okay, it's pretty much half of it. And then this little piece that's left. Reason being is because I had a client that wanted, um, she had ordered like five of each. And uh, five of each of a different scent. And so I had to like really measure it out. Like that was kind of, tedious. I had to really measure out so that way um, I could give her what she needed and I could do what I needed to do as far as um, what profit that I was going to be making and um, that I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't shortchange her, you know. So this is like two pounds and it shows you on the front. And I think they all, this brand all comes in two pounds, but it's about right here. Probably can't see it that good. Um, I did put um, in the comments of the last video, the brand um, that I used, the Stevenson brand that I used for the Melt and Pour. And this one is the Crystal Soap Base. They have like a shea butter, they have different ones, but I don't know if those are vegan. So you have to check and see if it says vegan for these. They're not very expensive. What makes the sale for things like this is the customization of you being able to do whatever scent anybody wants. 
I give you an example. Like I have like Japanese cherry blossom, I have strawberry, I have peach, I have all kinds of uh, essential oils, right? And it's all based on clients, what they like, things that they've asked for, and I just order it. So like Japanese cherry blossom, which I love. I would love to do a soap like that, but I don't know if our family's gonna like that. There's a peach, and I have um, strawberry, and I have like a green apple. That one smells so good. When you do the green apple with the shea butter for um, the lotion jars, that's just amazing smell, okay? So, I'm gonna... gonna have to find that but okay I wanted to show you like my little molds so this is like a mold that I use I love it this one's super easy you just pop them out um, when you're ready okay I need to go and find my cutter the one that I had in the other video um, I'm not sure why it's not in this box so I'll be back all right I got it yay okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna Cut it up into small pieces, not tiny. Where, what you doing, Texas? Okay. Gotta watch him. Okay, so I'm gonna just cut this up, just like I was cutting the soap last time, right? You can use a regular knife if you want to. Something that's dedicated for soap. Okay. So I'll use my two cup one to do this. And what I'm going to start off doing is I'm going to microwave this for two minutes. Two minutes. Then I'm going to stir it. I'm also going to... Uh, let's see. This right here, I want to keep this um, close by. This is alcohol with a little bit of water in it. What this does is this tends to um, get bubbles, like pockets in it, okay? And if you want like a smooth finish, when you pour it into your mold, I'm probably going to need more mold than this. Um, I'll, probably, I'll probably do this one actually probably do this one so yeah because these are larger bars so i'm gonna do this one okay. but all of those that was gifted to me the blue ones i purchased myself but like this one i have like one that's shaped like a heart um i have individual ones that are just like individual big bars that you can make and pour for yourself um all kinds of stuff that was given to me by that sister shout out to Bachia. so i'm gonna microwave for two minutes and it looks like there's about two minutes that's left on the key so i want to show y'all that real quick so look at that my oven is dirty don't judge me i have something that's built in there um, and so that's how it's coming out so far. I'm gonna let that cook a little longer though. Okay. So. Okay. Sorry about that, y'all. Let me make sure the lighting is right. Okay. So. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for that two minutes to go off. It just so happened that they're happening at the same exact time. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna wipe off my counter where I have my soap. Be careful with your essential oils. 
Now, what I will tell you is that essential oils are very strong. You want to look up and research whatever that it is that you're using and get used to it. Like some people, lavender makes them feel like anxious sometimes. Like it has different effects. Peppermint can give you a ton of energy. Um, <clears throat> different ones. Different, different ones kind of have different effects. Uplifting, calming. Um, and sometimes people react in the opposite way. So like lavender normally is supposed to calm you, but it can have the reverse effect on some people. Like for me, if I do too much lavender, it makes me feel anxious. Like if I rub it like on my chest, like with like lotion or something, if I make a lotion and I put the lavender in there and I rub it on my chest, it just, it does something for me. So I don't use the lavender um, like that. I will put it in a soap. I will use it in soap to just wash with but not in abundance because it just I just don't do well with it okay so I'll show you guys what it looks like okay and you see that that's for the quiche so just adjust that camera hoping it doesn't fall okay so there's still like big clumps that's in here you see guys you can see that it's like big chunks right I'm gonna just stir it around real good, just making sure. With this, this it starts to get hard and make soap very quickly. So you have to be very fast with this, very fast. You cannot just like let it sit. You need to cook it, or you need to heat it up right away and get it done. So I'm gonna do like another minute because you don't want it to like boil. You don't want it to start boiling. That's happened to me before where it starts like kind of boiling and you're like, ah, you got to calm it down and put like a little alcohol and the less alcohol that you have to spray because you, you don't want to have to put alcohol. Alcohol is drying. So you don't want to have to add alcohol to it. But this little mist, it helps with the little bubbles. So we're going to see after a minute how this works. I'm going to check on the quiche and I'll be back. Set my timer to. Uh, I'm gonna do like another ten minutes, and I'm just gonna check on it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna check on it and see how it's doing in about ten minutes. Actually, I'm gonna check it in about five minutes. Okay, so I still feel like there, there. I can still feel a lump that's in here. Y'all see that? Like a big lump. And that has to melt. That has to go down. So as you can see, the consistency, consistency is not stuck as much to the sides. So you want to kind of stir it up, but you don't want to make too many bubbles. You want to be gentle when you stir it. You don't want to get crazy. It's not like whisking it. You want to just stir it really well. Okay. So I'm going to do like another 30 seconds. Okay. And with uh, melt and pour, the lye is already cooked out of the soap. So like my other soap that I showed to you guys, that one, the lye is active. Like you have to cook the lye out. That's the whole pro uh, process of cold press. I mean, of hot process. When I say press or uh, cold or hot, that means that that's just the process of how you make it. So when you do cold, a cold process, you just do it all the way to the step where it looks like pudding 
um, where your soap looks like almost like a consistency of pudding. And then you just pour it in your molds and you let it sit for six weeks. That's that's what you do. If you get hot press, you do hot press, All it it's just a week, about a week. People say you can use it right away. Have I done that before? Absolutely. I have used it right away before. But I don't like... I, I prefer to wait a week. I feel like it's less harsh. Um, it's it's just perfect after waiting about a week to use it. And it does, like when you read up on it, it does recommend that you wait like at least a week. That gives, that makes sure that all the lye is completely, it's been processed completely. Okay. So now at this point, I don't have any more chunks left. No more chunks. Okay. I do have a few bubbles, but that's okay. I'll take care of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do lemongrass and the reason why I'm going to do this one is because this one, um, you don't have to worry about going out in the sun with this one. When you use lemon, you have to, and it tells you on here too, it says, um, to be careful when you go out, like if you're going to go out in the sun and stuff like that afterwards, that you want to be uh, careful. And then it has little recipes on the back, like body cleanser. Um, it has like a um, diffuser blend, window and mirror cleaner that you can do, that you can make with this lemon essential oil. It's really cool. I love this brand too. It's 365. So I'm going to do lemongrass. I'm going to do about about 10 10 drops 12 actually okay and remember this is about a pound this is about a pound okay because the whole the whole thing is two pounds and I used half of it for another pound okay so I'm gonna stir my lemon grass up Mm, smells so good all right and this is not super duper hot you can also i feel like this the scent is better when you let it cool down a little bit more and then add your essential oils but you don't want it to cool too much because then it starts getting hard okay so now since i've added my lemongrass i'm going to add my lavender okay and just a little bit just a little okay we're going to see how that does. Okay. So we're going to stir that in. Okay. Mm, smells very good. And this is kind of like, um, I feel like this is m more universal. It's something that the children can use and you can use. I'm just going to do a little bit of the lilac and lilies because I don't know if my husband's going to like that that much. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of that, about five drops. Okay. Yes, that smells really good. Okay. All right, so we're gonna add some more lemongrass because we want this scent to really pop. So we're gonna do about five more drops. What I typically do, it takes about 30 drops is what it is. That's normally what I do for like my lotion jars. It's about 30 drops. I'm going to do a teeny bit more lavender. Okay, mix that together. Mmm, yes, okay. So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this Japanese cherry blossom in there. Just to give it just a little bit of a, oh, I added about seven drops, okay. And then I'm gonna just mix that in like that. And you can see it starts settling, it gets thicker as you stir along. Okay. Mmm, wow, that smells amazing. Okay, so. Yeah, it's really good. I just want to add a little bit more. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. It's okay. 
do my job. Alright. I just added a few more drops in there. Now it's personalized. You know what your skin can take and what your skin can't take. I would recommend that you test, you do a skin test like on your forearm to see how you react. You always want to dilute your essential oils if they are not diluted yet. Okay. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, so now I have my molds. So I am going to pour in. And I'm going to fill it up. I have a family of five. So we're going to just pour this in here. And it's always good to use like a measuring cup or something that has like a little area where you can pour real well. So that is... Okay, so I got exactly five bars, okay? And I'm going to show you guys some of what I'm talking about, okay? So this is what I mean. You see those bubbles? Watch this. Bubbles disappear. And it's smooth. You see that? Okay, now one thing, you do want to make sure that your stuff is in a place that you don't have to worry about it being moved for probably like the next two hours. This normally sets in in about two hours. I will wait 24 hours before I use it just to make sure that it's like completely good. There's a little bit of bubble right there. Uh, just to make sure that it's completely good. But this, look at how pretty and smooth that is. So you see the difference compared to... Um, what the other soap looks like. Let's show you real fast. Okay. Remember the other soap. See the difference? So you have this, which is the hot press. <clears throat> I, like I said, I love the look of this. But if you just need something really quick, you don't feel like doing all that cooking, two-hour process and whatnot. There you have it, okay? All right, so I think the quiche is probably almost done. So give me a I will come right back. All right, this is the finished product. It looks so good. I cannot wait to taste it. I will let you guys know how it is. So there you have it. Double dose as promised because I haven't done videos in so long. I wanted to give you guys a double dose. And so you have your soap and you have your new recipe for quiche. Again, this is a crustless, gluten-free quiche. And if you want to get um, look at the ingredients, what I'll do is I will post the website. It's called Joy Food Sunshine. That's the website. Joy Food Sunshine. And so I just printed, printed it out. And I'll keep this. And I'll write in all the modifications that I did. And so it becomes your own recipe. So it's good to just take a base of someone's recipe. If you find them online. And then just like modify it. Put the things that you want to put in there. Or subtract things that you don't want in it if it calls for bacon pork bacon put turkey bacon or no bacon or vegan bacon or you know or meatless bacon you can just do a lot of substituting i've learned to substitute things because of the allergies that i have and so for me it's become easier um, to modify things but there you have it that's it please like share and subscribe and we love you, Mishpapa. Shalom. Sure.